Welcome to pharmaceutical calculations, a conceptual approach, lesson 20, part one, drug diffusion in dissolution and membrane crossing. Our today's objectives are to use the concept of diffusion and discuss the process of drug dissolution at the molecular level, use the uh, concept of diffusion and discuss the process of transmembrane uh, diffusion of the drug as a process related to drug absorption and distribution in the body, describe the characteristics of diffusion, explain the difference between diffusion, advection, and convection, and finally use the noyes whitten equation to um, calculate the rate of drug dissolution and the drug diffusion coefficient. Now, drugs can be absorbed only as separate entities from solutions. This is why the uh, dissolution of drug into an aqueous solvent forming a solution is so important. Now, uh, if the drug is present as aggregates or lumps, the particle size is way too big to go through membranes. Uh, so for a solute to dissolve in a solvent, there must be a similarity, a similarity in their physical chemical properties. Let me just assign symbols here to be able to explain the process of dissolution. So here we have solute, I'm going to write it as U, and solvent, I'm going to write it as V. The adhesive forces are essentially UV so, uh, forces, that, that would be solute-solvent uh, attractive forces. And the cohesive forces are basically solute-solute and solvent-solvent uh, forces, attractive forces or bonds, right? For a dissolution to take place, the adhesive forces or the solute-solvent forces must be much greater in energy than uh, or strength than the solute-solute or solvent-solvent forces. Also, uh, have in mind that uh, a favorable process is, is one that lowers the energy of a system, okay? Now here we have a schematic of drug dissolution. Uh, what you see in the top panel, this is my solutes, the solid circles, and the solvent molecules are the smaller empty circles. The process of dissolution starts uh, with collision of solvent molecules with the solute molecules. And upon collision, uh, uh, these collisions provide the kinetic energy needed to break the solute-solute and solvent-solvent bonds. Okay, so that's how the energy is provided to uh, split these bonds. Uh, as a reminder, again, um, bond uh, uh, breaking requires energy. Okay, now at the same time, the, we have the simultaneous creation of uh, solute-solvent uh, bonds. And these uh, bonds release energy, and the energy released is used again to break more bonds of solute-solute and solvent-solvent, and so on and so forth. Okay, at the end, when all the solute, uh, uh, or when all solutes dissolve in a solvent, we have a homogeneous distribution of the solute molecules in a solvent at maximum distance between each other, from each other, okay? So this is a homogeneous solution here. Okay, so all these concepts that I've just spent five minutes to describe in the, in the previous two slides are here written for you to read it at your own leisure. Uh, and, and please read it, it's very, they are very important. Now, the um, process of drug dissolution of a, a drug, of, of a tablet, let's say, um, is described or is, is done by, the, by an experiment called intrinsic dissolution studies or experiments. So we have an intrinsic dissolution experiment here. And it's called intrinsic because we keep the surface area constant, and it's important if we want to determine the diffusion coefficient, we have to keep the surface area of, of the drug they are constant. The solid circles here is, is drug, not solvent. Solvents are small and they are not shown here. So in, in this experiment, the solvent collides with the pellet here and they hydrate the uh, drug solutes and they drag them into the bulk. So here what we have is um, a, a graph that expresses, that shows the concentration of drug as a function of distance from the pellet, obviously. 
So at lengths from uh, at distances from pellet equals to h, this h is called stagnant layer or hydration layer. The uh, drug concentration is highest. We call it supersaturated concentration. And as the drug uh, diffuses into the bulk solvent, uh, its concentration is reaching a constant value, which is called uh, equilibrium concentration or C bulk. Okay. Now the equation that is used to to calculate the rate of dissolution and of course the diffusion coefficient is the noyes witten equation, which is a derivation of the Fick's law. Okay. In this equation, in equation 81, dm dt is the mass of solute dissolved per unit time. d is the diffusion coefficient of the solute expressed in units of square centimeters per second. h is the thickness of the solvent layer in which the drug exists at highest drug concentration, supersaturated concentration, Cs. A is the constant surface area of the dry solute exposed to the solvent, and of course is expressed usually in units of centimeter square. Uh, we have already this, this, uh, we have already described the supersaturated concentration and the bulk concentration. Have in mind that because we are using units of uh, uh, square centimeters, um, you may have to express the concentration of a drug as a grams per cubic centimeter. So always remember uh, our uh, conversion 1 ml is equal to 1 cubic centimeter. And again, do not underestimate unique conversions. It may, they may give you trouble the first few times, but, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, as you practice, you, became, you become much, much, much better. Okay? Now, since we have mentioned diffusion in the drug dissolution process, it is time for us to define diffusion. So diffusion is defined as the movement of solute particles, pay attention here, without bulk flow from an area of high concentration, solute, high solute concentration, to an area of low solute concentration. So we have three important points uh, to keep in mind here. First of all, diffusion of solutes, not solvent, right? Second, Solutes can diffuse without the diffusion of solvent, all right? And solutes always diffuse from high to low concentration. So here in figure 8.3, I have um, uh, included a schematic. The two solutions here, where uh, C1 is greater than C2, are separated by a piece of membrane. The thickness of the membrane is delta X here. And this membrane contains two kinds of channels. The first one allows the passage of solute molecules, which uh, this is solute, okay? Solvent molecules are not shown here. And the second kind of, of channels on the membrane allows the passage of um, solvent molecules, okay? Now these two channels uh, uh, allow, they are, they are very selective, only solute or only solvent. But both of them are present on this uh, on this membrane, so there is a passage of solute and solvent membrane and solvent uh, molecules from one compartment to another. Now diffusion of solutes, so solute direction of diffusion goes from high to low, okay, from right to left. The diffusion of water molecules would be from left to right as the water concentration here, so I'm just going to write it, let's say uh, C2 water is higher than C1 water, okay? Uh, and because there is less solutes in C2 in the left. And therefore the direction of diffusion of water molecules would proceed from left to right. Very, very important here. So at time zero, the solute concentration is higher on the right side, right? But because we have the membrane is permeable to both solute okay, and solvent, there is uh, a diffusion of the solute molecules from right to left and a diffusion of solvent molecules from left to right. And notice that there is no contradiction of the osmosis here because the water molecules also proceed from high water concentration to low water concentration. In osmosis, we had a semi-permeable membrane. But here, in this compartment, pure water, uh, so the seawater was higher. 
than in the left compartment where we had the presence of solute. So there is no contradiction with uh, with the process of diffusion that I've just described. In it, the, the difference here is that osmosis uh, involves the passage of only solvent molecules through the uh, uh, the semi-permeable membrane. Okay. Now, the, the transmembrane diffusor, diffusion is mathematically described by the Fix equation, which you see there, eight, equation A2. And here again, dmdt is the mass of solute transferred across the membrane per unit time. Um, so um, that would be uh, centimeter square per second, let's say. D is the, is the diffusion coefficient, similar to the dissolution process, actually identical. A is the membrane surface area, delta X is the thickness of the membrane that separates the two solutions. Now, dx dt, which is delta C dx dt, that's the, the concentration difference between uh, on the two sides of the membrane, and delta X is the, of course, the thickness of the membrane. So the driving force for the solute diffusion is the difference in concentration, okay? You need to remember that. And this is the... Uh, uh, and not just with an equation uh, to basically uh, see the similarity. They are almost identical. The only difference is this H actually, which is delta X here. Now, what are the um, characteristics of diffusion? First, it is random in nature and it doesn't have to follow the movement of the solvent. We have already mentioned that. We said that it proceeds without bulk flow, right? It always proceeds down a concentration gradient from high to low, all right? Very, very important. Um, it dominates only on, uh, on a millimeter length scale, uh, okay? So only at a short distance. It is affected by phase, and these two are actually the same. So the diffusion coefficient is higher in gases and slowest in solids. It increases with temperature because kinetic energy is higher. Uh, the size matters, of course, more molecules diffuse faster. And this last point is extremely important because it says that each individual substance has its own concentration gradient and can diffuse through membranes simultaneously independently of each other. So essentially, I may have a number of solutes um, on the exterior of, of a cell. Each one will diffuse into the cell depending on the individual concentration of these substances uh, intracellularly. Very, very important point here. Um, Sometimes this is called chemical potential, okay? All right. And finally, uh, the differences between diffusion, advection, and, uh, and convection. So the passive transport of solute molecules with the flow of a solvent is called advection. And convection is defined as the passive transport of solute by both, uh, you know, advection and diffusion. All right. So these are the differences. And here we have uh, two exercises for you. Um, I'm going to let you work on 8.3 by yourself. Uh, I think if you study the theory here, you're going to do fine. And also for 8.5. And maybe for 8.5, we can just uh, discuss A here. Uh, so A, choose the statements that describe the process of diffusion. Okay, so A, it says, diffusion is the movement of solute particles from low water to high water. So, so notice that a, a diffusion should be defined with respect to the solutes, right? Not with respect to the solvent, because it says, it says diffusion of solute molecules. But when I have low, low water concentration, I have a high solute concentration. And when I have a high order concentration, I have a low solute concentration. So essentially, this is A is correct because if diffusion proceeds from high solute concentration to low solute concentration. Please work on the remaining statements yourself. Uh, they, are, they are very interesting and uh, it's actually exciting. Uh, and at this point, I would like to thank you for your attention. Until next time.